Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Anna Maria Marzek Smith and I'm the Head of Sales at Proview Communications. Here is our agenda for today. So, a small intro into Proview and Yealink, and then within Yealink's latest product range, we're going to take a look at the WAT multi cell deck system, the W59R ruggedized handset, then we'll move on to the new T3 desk phone range their newest business headsets and portable speaker phones. Plus at the end, we've also got some special offers to announce in the form of NFR discounts and an ongoing project programme for which I'll give you the details. And within the webinar today as well, we've got two polls with four prizes up for grabs. So two on each, you can participate if you like, you don't have to, um, but if you do, like I said, we've got some prizes and there will be um, some of these new products that we're going through today. Right, before we start, if you do have any questions as we go along, there is a speech bubble on the right hand side where you can type your questions into a box. I will be doing my best to keep an eye out as we go along. If I do miss any, I apologise in my advance, but don't worry because we'll have plenty of time to go through those at the end as well. So, company profile. Proview, very briefly, Proview has been around since 2000, uh, 1999 and we began distributing Yealink in 2009. We specialise in selling to ITSPs and we've worked closely with Yealink to develop our service offering around their products. For example, our automatic provisioning and remote device management services. Yealink itself has been going for um, Yealink itself has been going for uh, 19 years and went public in 2017. They have over 1,000 employees, of which over half are engineers. This is why their products are always fresh and up to date with the latest technologies, um, which has led them to be number one in the market share today. Well, I've just had a message from somebody saying they can't see anything. Is anyone else having that issue as well? Could you pop that in, please, for me, just before I move on? Yeah, OK. I'm sorry. To be OK, it looks like everyone else is seeing it fine. Um, so if you're having an issue, you might have to maybe jump in and uh, jump out and come back in again. But I'll move on for now. So as we can see from the chart here, Yealink takes the majority of the market, followed by Polycom. And then in that grey section over there, we've got all the other main IP phone vendors taking the rest of the share. So it's a vastly large chunk that Yealink is responsible for. And their growth rate year on year, as we can see on the right, has been incredibly strong. As most of you will already be aware, Yealink has a very broad portfolio. So within their desktop range, we've got the high end T5 series with your inbuilt Bluetooth and Wi Fi's, the mid range T4 series, the newest T3 series, which I'm going to go through today, and then their lower end T2 series. There's also a number of conference phone solutions available. So we've got an Android color screen option that's also suitable for Teams. There's a lower end. Um, cost effective solution for smaller to medium sized rooms and a DEX option as well, which gives you that flexibility for where cabling may be an issue. And then within their DEX range, we've got the multi cell DEX, which again we're going through today with the IP67 rated ruggedized handset. There's also single cell DEX available, so two different bases, four different handsets, and again that DEX conference phone. Right, we'll go through the products now and I will start with the W80 multi cell system. So here is an example of how Yealink allows you to use um, DECT to kit out an entire office. So if we start with the W41P on that top right hand side over there. So this is where you can use a desk phone to connect to DECT via a DD10K dongle. Um, so you might have those in some of the offices. And then if you move down to the left, we've got the CP930W DEX conference phone, which will again connect to that base station. We'll have some cordless handset dotted around. So most likely go for the, if it's an office, you'll go for the 56H or 53H, because those are the nice chrome ones with the color screen. Um, 
Uh, and then these can all either run on the single cell system or the multi cell system if it's a larger site, um, like these examples that we've got here on the right. Um, so a large car room or a large retail shop, hotel and warehouse especially, which is where that ruggedized handset might come in handy. So there's two parts to this solution. You've got the WAT DM, which is the deck manager. So that's essentially your controller that holds all the configuration um, and does the call control. And then your WATB is the base stations, which you'll have multiple of, and that's what's going to give you the coverage and what your handsets are going to roam in between. So the hardware itself on both is exactly the same, um, and you can upgrade from one to the other. So let's say you had two DEX managers um, and you needed to add an extra base station to a solution. Instead of going out and buying another one, you could just change the firmware on that DEX manager and make it into a base station. And then vice versa, if you had a base station that needed to be a DEX manager, let's say you bought a load and forgot your DM, then you can just, um, again, change the firmware and turn it into that DEX manager. Oh, also, we've got um, 30 base stations on this solution maximum with up to 100 handsets and 100 simultaneous calls. So the signal itself has got good coverage. We've got 50 metres um, indoors and 300 metres outdoors, bearing in mind, obviously, on site, the thickness of the walls will have some effect on that. So it could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less, um, but generally around about on average on that. And then on each base station itself it can support eight simultaneous calls. Here is an example of how the multi cell system would look in terms of what kit you're going to have. So we've got the deck manager, just the one that's going to hold all your configuration. We will have multiple base stations, so you have up to 30 in total. You could even just have one um, and then expand in the future. And then in terms of the handsets that are compatible, it's pretty much um, every deck one that they have to offer apart from the old 52H. So we've got the 53H, which is the smaller more compact business style handset, the 56H, which is similar but uh, larger, the 59R, which is your ruggedized handset, the CP930 DEX conference phone, and then uh, certain desk phones with the use of the DD10K DEX dongle. The roaming and handover itself is seamless and the handset switching from one base to another is under 20 milliseconds. So it's really fast. You shouldn't notice that as you're going through, uh, just giving you a nice stable system. Yealink have also put together a deployment kit that you can purchase. So this allows you to carry out deck, survey, deck surveys on site. So if you've got engineers that tend to go on site anyway for installs, you probably want to send them in first with one of these. Um, so they can work out, it will allow them to work out how many base stations they need and where they're going to go. So it's definitely worth investing in because obviously you reuse it every time, take it out as and when you need. And then that way, when you are quoting your customer, you can provide them with true costs of the exact kit that's required. And therefore, you won't run into any issues of not having quoted enough or maybe having gone out and bought too many. The engineer pack, I just had a question how much it is. Do you know what? That's a really good question. Um, I should have probably had that to hand and I don't. Um, give me one sec. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, we've got a couple more questions coming in as well. So what I'm going to do, um, because these questions, I don't have the information to hand. Um, I can email, I can take your name down um, and I can email you afterwards. So um, we've got a price for the deployment kit. Um, also a guide for the deployment kit. Um, I'm guessing you're talking about how to use it. Um, oh, sorry, a guide for deployment if you don't have the kit. Um, there may be one. I'm not entirely too sure. I mean, the kit is the kit is more there just to work out how many you need. So you could still go onto site with a load of base stations and you know kind of trial and error until you've got it right. The idea with the deployment kit is that you go in and do that um, first, so that you, you're not you're not running into that issue of having you know pre-bought a load of a load of uh, base stations. 
Right, I've got the price now actually for you for the uh, deployment kit. So the trade price for you as our resellers is um, a little over £400. So um, it's not much. I know some of the other multi sale decks that are out there in the market, there's are more expensive than this. Um, so yeah, so it's a good price. Um, and like I said, it's got everything you need to work out exactly what you need to do. I've been asked as well if we can have multiple deck managers for redundancy. I don't know the answer to that question. I'm writing it down as we speak um, and I've got your name, so I will come back to you if that's OK. OK, so moving on to the 59R, which is the ruggedized handset. Um, it's got colour screen, it's IP67 rated, so it's slightly higher than the most common IP65 handsets you'll find in the market today, um, which makes it not just water resistant. I know it says that on the screen, um, but I did check up and it makes it, <laughs> it does actually make it waterproof in case of a submersion. So that's your extra bit of protection there. The ruggedized handsets are extremely popular. Um, in the market today, as we can say, as we can see, that takes 30% um, of the chunk, and obviously the 70% there is um, everything else. Uh, so they would be suitable for pretty much every other site that is in an office. Uh, again, we've got some nice examples here. So your warehouse, your factory, construction site, supermarkets, and then with the addition now of the multi cell in the Yalings product range. Um, you can now offer your customers the right coverage for those larger sites where your single cell just won't quite give you what you need. If we take a closer look at the handset itself, so we've got a 1.8 inch colour screen and a spring belt clip, and then the surface around the sides is, uh, is rubber, so it's protecting from scratching, it makes it nice and easy to wipe down as well and clean at the end of the day. The uh, keypad is backlit, so you can still see enough to dial when you're in dark spaces. And then the mic is noise cancelling as well. So again, suitable for those noisy environments like your factories and your warehouses. There's also an alarm button feature, which is really cool. So let's say you've fallen down and you tap right away, or you can see there's a man down. Um, you press that button and it will trigger an alarm. And then whatever internal procedure you've got in place, um, to trigger that and get the help that you need. The battery time is really good as well. So again, compared to the other handsets that we're seeing in the market today, so we've got 24 hour talk time with 360 hours on standby. Um, so you can leave it for quite a while, not on charge and not being used. The charge time itself is super fast. So maybe you've left it out for a while and forgot to charge it. We've all got that one person in the building who is notorious for doing that. Um, but not to worry, because you can stick this on for 10 minutes and within 10 minutes, you'll have two hours talk time. We've also got built-in Bluetooth, so you can connect to your Bluetooth headset. So you can walk around with your handset in your pocket if you don't want it on the belt clip and then just use your headset um, and it's nice and easy to walk around with. Then we've got other standard features on there. Um, yeah, um, sorry, I just got a bit distracted. We had another question come through. Is there any engineer training available? Um, we don't have anything in place at the moment. Uh, this handset itself is brand new and on the multi cell kit, we haven't, again, it's fairly new. So ProView certainly hasn't put anything together in place. Uh, but we do actually generally run training sessions on um, Yaelink and our other vendors. So I don't see why it can't be something we can look into. So again, I will just jot that down with your name and come back to you. Okay, moving on. So the handset itself is compatible with both the single cell W60 as well as the new multi cell. So it doesn't just have to be for the larger sites if you want to use this. So you may have a small site, for example, let's say a restaurant where you'll have the normal office style handsets at the till and one in the back office. But then in the kitchen, you'll want a ruggedized. Obviously, multi cell would be overkill for this, but you can use it on the single cell um, and keep your costs down. It's also in the process of being uh, 
tested to be made compatible to connect to the T5 series with the DEX dongle. So when I gave the example before, um, I was it was on the T41 and T42S, uh, but the T5 series, they're in the process of doing that as well. So if you keep an eye out for that, because Yearlink will be announcing it when it's ready. Um, and then we've got all these standard features here on the right, which I'm not going to go through because they're the same as most, such as your voicemail, three-way conference, etc. Right, let's move on to the T3 series phones. So just to give you an overview, there are three main models, including a color screen option. So you'll see here we've got P versions and G versions. The P stands for POE, which all of these are. And then the ones with the G on the end means it's also got gigabit Ethernet ports. Here is an example of where these handsets sit against the current T2 range and um, and the handsets that we think they will eventually re be replacing. So the T30P will be your T19P equivalent coming in at a lower RRP. The T31P will be your T21 equivalent. So again, similar to the T30, just with those two line keys to match the T21, and again, falling, it, falling in at a lower retail price. Then we've got the T31G, which can be a suitable replacement for the T3, T23G or the T40G as well. Again, falling in at a lower RRP on both those models. And then we've got the T33P slash G, um, which would be good to replace your T40G or T41S. So this one supports, it's got four fixed line keys, and but the main thing here is that it's got a color screen. So historically, if we look at Yealink's T2 series and T4 series, somewhat T5 as well. Um, you don't get a color screen unless you're looking at the high end. So in the T2 series, it would be T29, and in the T4 series, it's the T46. So if you want that color screen option, you've got to pay more. Um, so this one's really good, really good cost-effective options, especially great for those larger deployments where you just need to you know, bang out a couple of hundred handsets at a low cost, but you need them to look good. There is also going to be a uh, T4U series launching in quarter four. So if you keep an eye out for that as well, because uh, again, we'll be doing a webinar to go through those. All right, I just had another request for engineer training. So just so you're aware, I'm taking your name down um, and I'll get back to you as well. So, Main enhancements on this new T3 series in comparison to the T2 series, there's new hardware, stronger computing ability. We've got space for a wireless headset adapter, the color screen option, like I've just described, and also the option for to use it on EA Link's remote device management service. So to go into a little bit more detail about that, in terms of the hardware, it's got a sleeker, more elegant design compared to the old T2 series. You've got a mirror style screen and the plastic itself is scratch resistant. So it's more hard wearing and ruggedized. The stand at the back is adjustable. So you can have it at two different levels. Typically on the T2 series, it only fits on one. And then you can actually also use this stand as a Walmart bracket. So again, typically now you'd have to spend an extra five or ten quid to buy that separately but with this one they've designed it to be used as both the stronger computing abilities includes a more powerful chip so giving you a shorter boot up time which will now be 30 seconds max so for all of your engineers that are doing troubleshooting rebooting is obviously going to be a very common practice that they're going to do multiple times a day so hopefully this will give them overall a smoother experience and it'll be easier to use there's also more space on the chipset so making room for more language options for system backup and just general more scalability in the future Here we have the EHS35 wireless headset adapter, which is great. So those of you that are already familiar with the T2 series, you'll know that the lower end of that range doesn't support EHS for wireless decked headsets. So if you wanted to use a decked headset, you could still connect it, um, 
but you need to use a handset lifter. So EHS, for those that aren't aware, is that functionality um, of being able to answer a call remotely, so by pressing the button on the headset itself rather than the handset. So if it doesn't support it, like on the old T2 range, you can still connect it, but if you want to be able to answer remotely, you would have to use a handset lifter. Otherwise, you're pressing the button on the phone and thus defeating the point of having the wireless headset. So historically, if you needed that, you'd either spend more money on a more expensive phone, so you're looking at at least double the price, plus then your expensive headset, or you'll go for that lifter, which is big, it's loud, it's clunky, it's ugly, no one likes them, so I can't I can't even tell you how pleased I am that they've introduced this. Um, it just makes things so much easier. Yealink are also bringing in their own wireless headset, which is due to launch in quarter four. So keep an eye out for that because we're going to again be sending out some emails to everybody and Yealink are going to be notifying about that as well. I've just had a question. Is the T3 series available now? We have stock already ordered and on the way. We have some sample kits which are going to be with us within the next week or so, but we are also going to be running, as soon as the stock arrives, we're going to be running a um, NFR offer for anybody that wants to try it. So I'll give you more details about that in a um, in a moment because that's on the agenda for today. Uh, but in terms of the stock, we're probably looking at beginning to middle of August. Uh, for stock available to buy. USB ports on the T3 series. Do you know what? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I would have thought that they'd introduce that because they've done that on all of their other new products. So the new T4 series and new T5 have all got USB. However, I've got your name and I will check up on that and come back to you. So, um, just to show you side by side the upgrades from each equivalent of the T3 series to the T2 series. So, if we start with the T30P versus the T19P, the instant visual difference is the smarter design that obviously we've gone through. Most of the features are the same, except that you've got the EHS support for the wireless deck headset. You've got five way conferencing instead of three. It's also got smart noise filtering. Um, so it gives it a higher order quality. So again, more suitable for video offices. You've got the two adjustable angles rather than one. And then you've also got security slot and device management. So for those of you that already have experience using Unix remote device management server, um, you used to, they used to have included the T2 series on there, but they were running into loads of problems. It didn't work very well, so they had to pull it. The T3 series is now all suitable to be used on Yealink's remote device uh, management service. I just had a question, are the P versions gigabit? So the P versions are not gigabit. So if it's got a G on the end, it's gigabit. If it's just got the P, then there's no gigabit ports. It's just your standard 10 100. So um, this one here is the equivalent to the T21. Again, very similar to the other one with your three-way conferencing and headset adapter. Um, but the only other difference here is that whilst they both have backlit screens, your T31P is adjustable. Um, and then all the other additional features here are the same. Um, this 31P here as well, by the way, um, is there is a gigabit version of it as well. So it's T31P or T31G. So this is the T31G. I should have waited really for that slide to come through. Um, so this would be your T23 equivalent. Um, the slight difference here, though, is that the T, whilst the T23 has got three line keys, the T31G only has two. However, most people tend to go through the T for the T23G because they need the gigabit rather than those extra BLF keys. So. If that's all you're after, the T31G will be suitable. And if not, then you can just go on to the T33, which is this one here. So you've got a non-gigabit or gigabit version of this one. It's your choice. If they're not fussed about it and you want to shed a few quid off your project, then you can go for the T33P. Um, and on this one, we've got um, this one is also equivalent to your T40G. So the screen itself is slightly bigger. It's colour instead of black and white. 
and it's got adjustable brightness rather than fixed. And then you've got four line keys on here, but you can actually also flick through them, giving you 12 VLF keys in total. And then the same extra features they share as the others. So with the five-way conferencing, um, and then all of these T3 equivalents that we've gone through today come in at a lower RRP than their T2 or T4 equivalent. So the bottom line is on these is you're getting more for your buck with this range plus much better looking devices. So personally, I think if you're currently using T2, that's your range of choice. That's your most common one. I, it's a no brainer that you would just transition straight to the T3. Okay, I've just had a question. Are you still able to use OpenVPN on the T3 phones? Um, I will find out exactly which ones because I know on the T2 phones, um, they don't. it doesn't quite work on all of them. So I don't know whether that's going to be the same for the T3 series. Um, so if it's going to reflect that or whether it's just going to be suitable on every single model. Um, so I'll just take down your name there. I think this is the first time I've been through a webinar and I've not known the answers to so many questions. However, in my defense, these are so new and I haven't even had a chance to properly play around with them yet. So there we go. There's my <laughs> there's my defense for today. Um, I'll probably have to use it again. Right. So VPN. OK, let's move on. So poll time. I said we were going to do two polls today. This is the first one. Um, anybody who does choose to participate, you will go into a prize draw and you can win one of these T33Gs um, as a prize, which we will announce afterwards. So let's go into question number one. So it should show up on your screen and you'll be able to um, then click your click your answer. So bear with me. First time doing a poll on here. Right. Question number one. Which multi-cell deck solution do you sell? So we've got on here Yealink, SNOM, Gigaset, Panasonic, and then other or none. Now, if you're already currently doing more than one brand, that's absolutely fine. Just pick the one that you tend to do the most of. Um, I'll give you a few seconds to go through that. And if you, I mean, if you're just not sure, you can just pick none. All right, numbers are still going up, so I'll just give that a, another moment or two. Well, we're still going. <laughs> Okie doke. Right, I'm going to move on to question two now. So... Question number two, on average, how many decked base stations did you sell in 2019 across any brand? Now, I appreciate not everybody here today is going to have that information to hand. That is absolutely fine. Just give us your best guess. We're not going to know, I promise. Um, we've got here zero, less than 10, between 10 and 50, 51 and 100, or more than 100. I can see I've also been asked for a retail price on the T33G, so I will get that for you whilst we are going through these. Right, OK, I'm going to move on to question number three. So have you already tested the W80? And if not, would you like to test it? Super simple. Yes, I have. No, I haven't, but I'd like to or no, leave me alone. <laughs> I'll just give you a moment to go through that because I can see the numbers are still going up. Well, 
whilst you're answering that last question, I've um, that third question. Sorry, I've just had another question asking if the G versions are POE. Yes, they are. Um, so whilst the ones that have P stand for POE, um, and the G versions don't have that in there, um, but they are definitely POE. So essentially they're all POE, but then the ones that have a G are also gigabit. That's probably the easiest way uh, for you to think about that one. Right, so let's move on to question number four. So the final question of this poll, and remember there's two prizes up for grabs. Um, there are loads, quite a few of you on here today, um, but you're in with a good chance. So question number four, which model of the T3 series do you think will be most popular among your clients? So we've got the T30P, the T31P, T31G, and then the T33P and T33G. So just to give you a quick reminder, because I appreciate you may not remember everything we've just gone through, the T30P is your T19 equivalent. The T31P is your T21 equivalent. So it's got the two line keys. The T31G is your T23 equivalent. And then the T33P and T33G are your T23, sorry, your T40G slash T41 equivalent. And that's the ones with the color screen as well. Right, just give you another moment to go through that. See the numbers are still rolling up. Okay, right, end of poll number one. Let's have a look at, go there, right. Yealink's newest USB headsets, uh, which, as you all know, will have been in insanely high demand recently due to everybody working at home. Um, so they've introduced this main model here. So it comes in as a single earpiece or dual earpiece. I've actually tested one of these at home. They're really good. So the headpiece itself, the headband is sturdy and robust, which I hope you can kind of get that from the picture anyway. Um, and then the earpieces have got a really nice good quality. So the first thing I thought when I held it in my hand was this definitely does not feel like a cheap headset. So you've got here, it comes with a USB connection and also the 3.5 mil jack. Um, so it's suitable for desk phones with USB ports, computers via USB, your tablets and mobile phones on that 3.5 mil. So it's given you great flexibility, especially now that you've got some people that have been working at home but are going to now return to work. Um, if your phone's there, have got the USB port, then you can simply use this one and take it either way. So you might use it via USB on your desk phone at work and then take it home and plug it into your laptop via USB or via the headset port. Right, I've had question asking why is the mono more expensive? I'm guessing that we've just made a bit of a boo-boo and put the wrong price um, so let me just quickly go back to that slide. Bear with me one moment. Yeah, I think I do apologize. We must have made a little bit of an error there. The dual one will be more expensive as always because it's got two earpieces rather than one. Right, which side was I on? Oh yes, okay, audio quality. So supports wideband audio technology and it's got noise cancelling as well. Um, so suitable for your noisy environments, so your larger offices and potentially call centres as well. And now I'm going to move on to the speaker phones. So here we've got the CP900 and the CP700. As you've probably guessed, one is bigger and suitable for larger rooms. And then the other one is for smaller use and comes in at a lower price. So both of these are suitable for small private offices. For example, I use mine when I'm working from home now, I use mine at home um, instead of a headset anytime I'm on a video call or a conference call. In fact, I'm actually been using it this whole time today for this webinar. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the sound quality for what it sounds like at your end. 
It's good for small reading rooms as well. Um, so again, I've used it in uh, quite a large room. So I don't know if any of you here have been to our offices and in our training room, uh, but it's quite a big room. And I had four of us sat around a large table uh, with our sales director connected on the other line, doing our best to host a sales meeting whilst the meeting room was taken. Um, but we had the guy furthest apart. He was probably maybe about a meter and a half away. Um, or so, but as far as as far as Craig was concerned, the line we were all clear. You could hear everybody. Um, and this was the CP900 I'm referring to, by the way. I've not tested the CP700 in that environment. Obviously, it's slightly smaller, um, but they'd still work in 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 those smaller situations. And then on the go, you know, it's a tiny unit. You can chuck it in your bag. I tend to take mine out with me now. So if I'm ever out and about with um, with customers and I need to get someone on the line, it's really great to just have a mini conference call there and then. And I'm not going to lie, it's also really good for Netflix and music when I'm in my hotel room um, or even at home, you know, since lockdown and we're kind of all stuck and I've been in my garden. I've been taking this outside with me, connecting my phone via Bluetooth and playing some music and enjoying a nice beer. So great for personal use as well as for business use. So this here is just to give you an idea of the size and design. So like I said, they're small and compact. They both come in a, a firm kind of case. Um, so it's like a zipper bag. So it just makes it nice and handy and it keeps it protected during transport. And then these are the, again, from the top. So the keys here are pretty self-explanatory with the icons. Um, as I said before, you can connect it via Bluetooth, but you've also got a USB cable. So that's what I've connected to today. I'm connect, plugged into my laptop via USB. Um, and then both of them as well are optimized for Teams. So you've got a little Teams button there, which you press, and it will bring up the Teams app on your device. And then all of these are touch sensitive icons rather than actual buttons. Um, so when they're not lit up, you can't see them when it's not turned on. So it just it's a really smart piece looking kit. Special offers. Yay. So like I said before, we're going to be launching imminently NFR pricing on all of these new devices that we've gone through today. So the T3 range, the headset, the speaker phones, and the multi-cell decks with that ruggedized handset. So if anyone's on our mailing list, you will get an email with prices on these. If you're not on our mailing list, ask us and we'll sign you up. So we've got our email address there, which is just contact at profi.co.uk. Um, we've also then got project program so some of you may have already been aware so this has been running for a couple of months now so you only can introduce the project program to help certain industries during the time of the pandemic so for example NHS and healthcare education government sites um, it was due to expire at the end of June but they have now extended it until September which is really great um, the percentages have changed a little bit. So if you have already been referring to the previous one, just make sure you take a good look at this. We have actually sent an email to our customer base as well. So again, if you're not on our mailing list and you want to receive information about this, send us an email to contact at proview.co.uk and we can get you signed up. Final poll of the day. So again, we've got a chance to win a prize here this time. It's going to be for the mono USB headset with a 3.5 mil jack. So let's find question number one. What is your estimated sales quantity of speakerphones in 2020, including all brands? So we've got zero, less than 10, between 10 and 50. 51 to 100 or more than 100. Again, I appreciate not everybody will have this information off the top of their head, so just give us your best guess on what you think. And I'll give you a moment there before we move on to the next question.
Okay, numbers are still rolling, so I'll give you a few more seconds and then we'll move on. Okie doke, let's move on to question number two. What is your estimated sales quantity of headsets in 2020? Again, across all brands. So we've got zero, less than 10, between 10 and 50, 51 and 100, or more than 100. And again, if you're not too sure, that's okay. Just give us your best guess. We won't tell you off, I promise. And I'll give you a moment or two before we move on to question number three. Okay, we'll close that one now. So question number three. Which products would you like to purchase NFR units of? So we've got the W80 Multicell, the 59R Ruggedized Handset, the T3 Series Decked Range, the CP700-900 speakerphones, or the USB headsets. Now, I'm sure there's going to be some people here that want to test all of them, and that's absolutely fine. Um, just, yeah, give us, give us your best. I can see the numbers are rolling in quite quickly on those, so I'll give you a, I'll give you a moment before we move on. Okay, I think we're all done there. So. Final question of today, and thanks for bearing with us. Do you have any project opportunities that Proview and Yealink may be able to support you with? Super simple, yes I have, no I don't, or I may have something coming soon. So this one obviously here is just to kind of get an idea of what's currently going on. If you do have any and you're not currently speaking to Proview about what pricing support you can get, do get in contact with us. Like I said before, the email address is contact at proview.co.uk or call in and speak to our sales team. The guys are always happy to help. Um, they're super knowledgeable about the products. So yeah, use us, utilize our team and our knowledge and we'll get you what you need. Okay, and it looks like all of those have come in, so we'll close that one as well. Thank you, everybody. Like I said before, we will be um, putting those into a prize draw, everyone that has voted, and we'll be contacting you afterwards. So that is everything for today. I am open for questions, so hit me with whatever you got, and I'll do my best to answer. Whilst those are coming in, if you're not currently registered as a Yealink partner, so the Introduce the Partner Program in April 2019, if you haven't signed in any signed any documents in the last year, then no, you're not registered. So there's a link down at the bottom there if you want to get signed up. It's awesome because you get preferential pricing, access to demo units. You also get a nice badge that sits on your website telling you that you are an approved uh, Yealink partner as well. And you also then get contact um, uh, sales and technical support contacts in China. So go ahead and register. We'll give you everything you need to sign up and we can go from there. So question, do we have a support team? Yeah, so we've got our technical support. If you're looking for technical advice for pre-sales, then all of our sales team are actually um, a, a very technical knowledgeable about our products so they can help you put together your solution and then if you do run into any issues post sales we do have a technical support team that you can just pick up the phone and call or send an email to and they can help you with your troubleshooting or whatever it is that you need to do so we've had another question on expected availability dates i'm guessing you're referring to the t3 series if it is the t3 series you're referring to then we're looking at um beginning to middle of august on those and we will be sending an email about that so again if you're not on our mailing list contact us and we'll add you there so that you get the notification with the prices 
The multi-cell deck is already available, so you can buy it from Proview now, it's in stock. And the W59R is like the T3 series on its way um, and hopefully should be middle of August. But again, we'll be sending, we'll be notifying our customer base. So if you want to get onto the mailing list to be notified, we can add you. I've just had a question about um, do we sell the Yay Link video conferencing kit? So it looks like it's the team conferencing kit I'm being asked about. So the MVC 800, 500, and 300. We do sell them, everything's listed and price is there. Um, we're currently keeping in lower levels of stock just because it's still fairly new. Um, but lead time generally, if we don't have it in stock, it is just one to two days. So um, pricing will be on your process portal if you've got a login. If you don't have a login, come and speak to our sales team and we'll get you set up. So multi-cell roaming. To roam from one unit to another, do the set, do the deck signals of the units need to overlap or can there be a gap in the coverage? They do need to overlap. It doesn't need to be loads, um, but you can't have a gap in there. They need to be going from one to another. So again, this is what that deployment kit is really, really good for, because essentially what you're going to be doing is you'll be put in a base station and then um, you'll have your handset paired to it and you'll be walking away and on the handset there'll be there'll be like a dial that's telling you um, your signal strength and then you'll get to a point where it's slightly too low um, and then that's when you know you're going to need to put in another base station so yeah they need to overlap overlap slightly but I would strongly recommend investing in a deployment kit so that you can go onto site for your customers. I had a question before about the RRP on the T33G. So that's a gigabit color screen version. The retail on that is 80 quid. Um, so obviously your trade price will be less than that. Um, if we're looking at the color screen options that they've currently got now, so the T29 or the T46, you're looking at the RRP is at least 150 quid on those. Um, so it's, it's, it's a really good cost effective phone. Are the headsets bespoke to Yearlink phones? The answer to that is no. So it's essentially because it is just a USB and a 3.5 mil jack, you can connect it to any device that has a USB port or a 3.5 mil jack. Most phones that have a USB port should support it as well. I mean, it's something you may want to test historically, in my experience some usb ports aren't quite powerful enough for a headset they're great for charging your phone but not necessarily for a headset 